Hello everyone and welcome to the FIAT Distinctions Presentations for Australia. Today we formally acknowledge the Australians who have gained their FIAT Distinctions in 2023. This is the fourth year we have held this presentation event online in what has proven to be a highly successful format that enables us to gather from all parts of Australia and to be able to invite a FIAP official to join us from overseas to formally present our FIAP distinctions. Last year, we had the second largest number of Australian FIAP distinctions recipients with 53 FIAP distinctions awarded. This year is one of our quieter ones with 37 applicants. Whilst there are a number of distinctions recipients who sadly can't join us today due, due to travel and other commitments, it is wonderful to have so many of you here. Upon the formation of the Australian Photographic Society 61 years ago, the role of Australia's operational member of FIAP was passed on to the APS by the Photographic Society of Queensland, who performed this role in the years prior to our national body being formed. Indeed, Australia has had an organisation uh, act, uh, an organisation act as an, an operational member of FIAP for, for many years. Um, in fact, dating right back to some of the earliest years of FIAP. One of the, the affiliation means APS members are considered to be individual members of FIAP. One of the APS tasks as part of our operational member status is to the verification, initial administration and lodgement of Australia's applications for FIAP distinctions. Australia has a large and active group of photographers who enter international salons. On all the salons results I see, Australia is usually well represented in the awards list of these salons. This ultimately leads to a day like today where we celebrate our Australian recipients of the FIAP distinctions. As mentioned, the use of technology offered by Zoom has enabled us to have a FIAP board member to be our official presenter at this event for the last three years. This year, it is with huge pleasure that we have Romain Nero from Luxembourg join us as our special guest. Romain is a member of the FIAP board of the International Federation of Photographic Art, which we all know as FIAP. He is also the director of the FIAP patronage service. He's currently traveling and today joins us from France to, to present our FIAP distinctions. We are also joined by the following members of the APS Management Committee. The APS President, Greg McMillan, who is also handling the technical aspects of this Zoom event today. Senior Vice President, Pierre Jessen, and our Junior Vice President, Andrew Swinfield. I would like to also formally acknowledge our verifying officer team. A number of them are present today as distinctions recipients themselves and with the lower number of applicants this year, we've also been able to invite, invite all of those who were verified, who verified applications this year. I wish to publicly thank the, the VO team for their invaluable assistance, to, both to me and the applicants. I'm very aware that in many instances, this involves some mentoring of those planning to apply for FIAP distinctions. I'll introduce our special guest, Romain Nero, properly to you in a moment. But first I'll invite the president of the Australian Photographic Society, Greg McMillan, to formally welcome you. Greg, if you want to unmute yourself, the microphone's yours. I get to do two things then, unmute myself and spotlight myself. So that's, that hopefully, hopefully things will go well today. Um, look, Robin's already made a couple of very important uh, references to invited guests in terms of Romain and also the verifying officers. And I just want to endorse those initial comments, but I also want to add, I guess, a special mention for Bronwyn. Um, I, I don't think there's a person who's applied for a FIAP award in the last several years who doesn't pay homage to Bronwyn's tenacity, her energy, um, her, and I say this in a very constructive way, her pedantry is about doing it right. So that ultimately when our applications go through to FIAP, um, you know, my understanding is that, you know, ours go through fairly easily because the, all the hard work's been done by us as, as a starting point, the verifying officers, but as Bronwyn in terms of that final gatekeeper. So Bronwyn on behalf of, I guess, everyone today uh, and everyone on APS who's been before us, uh, thank you very much for your time and contribution. Um, look, APS is, a, is like many, many organisations, it's built on the backs of volunteers who, 
Some are very high profile, uh, some are less high profile, some are quite, visit, uh, quite invisible in the background. But you know, one of the things that's been good about the last three or four years, as Bronwyn mentioned before, with, with COVID and moving this to a Zoom environment is that we, we do get a chance to perhaps more publicly acknowledge the contributions of Bronwyn and other people, but also publicly, I guess, acknowledge the, the efforts of APS and sometimes non-APS members in terms of getting their FIP awards. Um, I actually stuck my toe in the water this year and remarkably managed to get enough points to, to be here both in a dual capacity today, one as my role as president, but also as a, an individual photographer. And having a bit of a chat to Roman before we started today, it's, it is interesting. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, doesn't matter what you do in your professional life. You know, when you start talking about photography and the types of photography that you do, we all have a common ground to come together, I guess. And, and to me, that's the beauty of photography finding a common ground to meet a whole range of interesting people, a whole range of different people from a whole range of different societies, different countries and different locations. So I guess I, I, I will finish on, on this note of saying, for those who are successful today with their FIAP awards, congratulations. If you're at the start of the journey like me, um, come back again next year and the year after. If you're far more advanced and, you know, without letting a secret out of the bag, I don't think, um, I think Bronwyn's up for a fairly special significance today. So uh, looking forward to see her, uh, um, receiving that award later today, but also there's other people like Vicky who I remember from last year, quite outstanding in terms of her achievement. Again, I think is back again this year. So, yep. Thank you to Philip. Thank you to Roman. Thank you to Bronwyn. Thank you to everyone who participates today. And for those people who um, perhaps think this is enough in terms of the award level you're at, uh, think again. Come back and have another crack next year and the year after. Bronwyn, after that, I'll go back to being quiet and silent in the background, and over over to you. Thank you, Greg. And thanks for those words, it's appreciated. Now I would like to give an especially warm welcome to Romain Miro, who joins us from France, where he is currently on a family trip. As indicated earlier, Romain is a, near, is a, Romain is a member of the FIAP Executive Board and Director of the FIAP Patronage Service that sets standards for roughly 700 international salons around the world. Romain, like many of us, developed an interest in photography at an early age, gaining his first camera at the age of nine. Courses during his high school years saw him developing and processing both monochrome and colour photos himself. He particip participated in national and international photography competitions since 1998. In 2023, he gained his EFIAP Diamond One. He has won the National Photographic Championship of Luxembourg twice. 10 of his photographs are held as part of the national collection of photographs about Luxembourg. And the collection of his photos from Cuba are part of the permanent collection, um, a, per a permanent exhibition that has been collected by a former director of AFP in Havana. Other than the salon participation, themed sets of his work have been exhibited in 64 exhibitions in 21 countries. These are a mix of personal and group exhibitions. And they've been on subjects such as Cuba, ballet, silhouettes and Chinese martial arts, just to mention a few. Romain's contribution back to photography and photographers has been immense. Within Luxembourg, he was the General Secretary of the Luxembourg Photographic Society from 2003 to 2013, and since then has been their Vice President. Since 2017, he has also been Vice President of his local Photographic Society. He is regularly on the judging team for international salons. In 2006, he became Luxembourg's Fiat Liaison Officer, a role he continues to this day. In 2012, Romain was elected to the FIAP board and became director of the FIAP patronage service. Whilst he has two assistants, this director's role would be one of the most labor intensive roles within FIAP. One only has to look at the evolution of digital salons over this last decade especially, and the challenges that required urgent changes to enable salons to continue during the pandemic years to get some feel for the workload in this role. Across these last few years, FIAP also ran four international photographic contests, all free, and three of which had a charitable focus. Romain was chairman for these four salons. Added to this has been the ongoing collaborative work between FIAP and PSA, 
much of which has been associated with Salon rules. Romain and his PSA counterpart have been instrumental in seeing many improvements, more of which will come to fruition in 2024. Organisations in eight countries have conferred service on recognition honours on Romain and FIAP awarded him the Excellent Service Distinction in 2010 and then the Honorary EFIAP in 2014. Remain epitomises what it is to dedicate much of one's time to photography and photographers. He somehow manages this as well as working full time in a very busy senior position within one of Luxembourg's national water supply company organisation and spending time with his family. We've been very fortunate that Remain has been able to join us today to personally present this year's Australian FIAP distinctions. Remain's involvement today makes these presentations extra special. Indeed, we are also honoured that Remain has not only found the time to be with us for this event, but is doing so on his birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Remain, <laughs> and welcome Thank to you. the Thank Distinctions you. Presentations for Australia. I now invite you to give your greeting and you'll need to unmute yourself. <laughs> I think I'm uh, the mute key yes. You hear me? Yes. Yeah, perfect. So thank you very much, uh, Brandon, for this uh, insight into my, yeah, into my photographic life that I had for a few years now. And um, yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Mr. President, uh, Mrs. Vice President, dear Brandon, dear members of the board and from the different committees and dear FIAP distinction applicants who are here today, dear photo friends. It is a great pleasure and honor for me to share with all the people gathered here and waiting impatiently for their very own special award in form of a certificate and a tiny little pin that means so much to us and that is the material proof and recognition of year-long efforts of successful competing in FIAP salons all over the world with their very own photography. Let me share with you the numbers I found in our FIAP Salon files. The FIAP Salon files are the Excel sheets that organizers have to complete and send in to the FIAP Partner service after the event and where all the useful data like the detailed results, judging data and so on are registered. So I can say that in 2022, 3% of all acceptances made in FIAP Salons have been achieved by you, by around 360 Australian photographers, and the big number is 14,890 acceptations. From this number of acceptances, 1,836 pictures have been allocated an award. So congratulations to all of you for this big achievement. So today, 37 distinctions will find their proud bearer. But as Greg already mentioned, 37 applications also means that somebody must go through a hell lot of photographs, picture names, dates, and so on, in order to check the accuracy of the records. This is managed in several steps, and as I understood, by the FIAP Louisan officer who is assisted by a committee. Being myself the representative liaison officer of Luxembourg, I know exactly the amount of work which this implies my gratitude to all persons involved for their confidence, their perseverance, and their task in this task, and particularly to the FIAP liaison officer and active FIAP collaborator and director of FIAP News, uh, Bronwyn Casey. Um, thank you, dear Bronwyn, for your never-ending commitment. So thank you very much to have the opportunity to be part of this. And let's hear some names now and see some pictures. Thank you. Thank you, Romain. Now I'm just going to cover a, a little bit of um, introductory stuff so that everyone knows what's what's going to be happening here. Um, firstly, I think all of you have got your videos on. Um, if you haven't, it would be good if you could. Um, and you will all be muted. You need to. We ask you to remain on mute during the presentations until your name is announced. The mute and unmute button is usually down in the bottom left-hand corner. It's a little microphone symbol. And when your name is called for your presentation, please unmute yourself. 
and then you can mute yourself again after your presentation has been completed. Um, we are recording this event, as you have already been told, and we'll be taking a few screen photos as well. Um, you should assume that you can be seen at all times. Don't do anything in, in the background that you might find embarrassing later. The presentations will be grouped according to the distinction level. There will be slideshows of the images of the, that were submitted by our applicants for, to FIAT this year as part of their application. After each slideshow, Remain will be announcing the names of the distinctions recipients who are here today. This will be done one person at a time. When he announces your name, please respond. We will be endeavouring to spotlight you on screen, but there may be a short delay whilst we locate you. You need to unmute yourself by clicking the microphone as mentioned earlier. And if you've got your certificate handy, it's great if you can hold that up too, because that's part of what this is about. We're um, presenting you with your distinction. Uh, and you're welcome to, to say a few words. Don't get too lengthy, because obviously there's a few people to go through. Um, um, I will be announcing the names of those people who aren't here. Um, there will be times when you can hear me, but I will be off screen to stay in the background during your presentation. So please don't alter your settings if you can hear me and can't see me. Each distinct, at each distinction level throughout the presentations, the distinctions recipients who are present will be announced in alphabetical order according to their surname. At the end of the presentations, we will take some screenshots of the whole group holding their certificates. So effectively a group photo. And that's the reason we limit this event to 49 people because we can get 49 on one screen together. So without any further ado, um, in order to honour eminent personalities, known in the field of photography, the International Federation of Photographic Art, known as FIAT, award distinctions for photographic artists known for their artistic work in photographic or indeed audiovisual artistry, and for those who by their work or achievements have contributed to the progress of fiat or of photography in general, that being services rendered. Only achievements in international salons run with fiat patronage can be counted for fiat photographic artist distinctions. National federations affiliated with fiat, such as the Australian Photographic Society, can put forward candidates for these distinctions. The final decision whether or not a FIAP distinction is awarded, rests with FIAP. This year, the Australian Photographic Society had 37 successful applications for FIAP distinctions for photographic artistry. Today, we acknowledge and celebrate their achievement. The distinction Artist FIAP is the first artistic distinction that can be obtained. A successful candidate must have gained at least 40 acceptances with 15 different images in 15 salons and eight different countries. Let's have a look at the work of our AFIAP applicants.
So that's the point where I will take over. And uh, so I'm very happy to give the first distinction, the AFIAP uh, distinction, the first step into uh, the uh, FIAP distinction series of, of levels to Rita England. Congratulations, Rita. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to receive this award. So going on to the second uh, AFIAP uh, distinction uh, bearer, now future bearer, will be Sue Martin. Congratulations, Sue. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the work that's gone into this um, presentation. Great. So also I want to congratulate uh, Bronwyn to the, to the little film we we were shown with all these uh, stunning pictures uh, with this uh, uh, great music. So it really uh, was a good thing to, to show these pictures in this way. Greg McMillan will be the third uh, distinction AFIA bearer. Congratulations, Greg. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bronwyn. Thank you, everyone. Hopefully I'll be back maybe next year. So the next one to get the AFRAP distinction will be Michael Moore. Congratulations, Michael. Uh, thank you. It's, um, and uh, thanks you very much to Bronwyn and all the verifying officers as well for all the assistance that they gave during that's not being seen uh, uh, throughout this. It was, uh, uh, a very enjoyable process the way they ran it. Thanks very much and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Michael. So we're going out to on to David uh, Munro. Congratulations, David. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for everybody who was involved in the verifying officers and especially to Bronman for a nice presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. So next we be the turn of Peter O'Brien. Congratulations, Peter. Well, thank you very much. I'm very uh, pleased to receive this award and thanks very much to Bromon and uh, to Martin Ragman, my verifying officer for all their hard work. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. So next will be Martin Riley. Congratulations, Martin. You're on mute, Martin. Yes, there's always one. Sorry. <laughs> thank you for thank you, Remain, for giving up your holiday. It's an honor to receive it. Huge amount of work from Bronwyn and verifying officers, Margaret Grady and Tina Dial, who helped me through the process and um, corrected a lot of my errors. So thank you. Thank you, Martin. I appreciate your background picture. Uh, <laughs> you have I wish I was there. <laughs> Great. Okay, going on to Philip Stevens. Congratulations, uh, Philip. Yeah, Philip's not here. So. Yeah. Okay. Then we have Helen Warnot. Warno. Excuse me for misspelling your name. So congratulations, Helen. Helen was, but she hasn't returned. I think or. I Did think I she. It? I think she dropped out. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Have her. Oh no, she's here. She's actually on the listing. Are you here, Helen? Oh, they've got her. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, she moved quick. Helen, you'll need to unmute yourself. She's unmuted. Doesn't have sound. Uh, I think we take the gestures as, <laughs> as having a fair amount of meaning in themselves. <laughs> okay. And other than the ones already mentioned that we, uh, that have not managed to make it into the, today's meeting when we were hoping they would, uh, we also have a number of other AFIAP recipients. They are Sandipan Chaudhry, Kerry Gerlach, Jeffrey Hui, Keith O'Brien, 
Leslie Patterson and Stefan Thomas. Moving on to the next level. The Distinction Excellence FEAP, EFIAP, is awarded to photographic artists who, apart from having excellent techniques, have significant numbers of their works often accepted in many international salons under FEAP patronage. A successful candidate must have obtained at least 250 acceptances with at least 50 different images in 30 salons in 20 different countries. At least two of their photos must have gained an award. Let's have a look at our EFIAP applicants work. going on to the IFIAP distinction. And there we have uh, the first one is going to Su Chen, uh, absolutely stunning light painting picture. For, uh, congratulations, Su. Thank you very much, Mama. Uh, thank you and happy birthday. I'm very honored to receive thank this you. award. And uh, I'm very grateful to the VO uh, Denise North and also Bronwyn for all the hard work behind the scenes. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. So second EFIAP will go to Nilmini De Silva. Congratulations, Nilmini. Hi, everyone. Yes, thank you from me too, to Bronwyn, especially for all the detailed emails we get. And to my VO, Martin Reagan, thank you. Thank you, Nimin.
coming to the third person receiving the EFIAP distinctions. And this will be Nolene Kuzman. Congratulations, oh. Nolene. Oh, thank you very much. And great great travel pictures I saw from you. Sorry? I saw some great travel pictures from oh, you. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you very much to Ron. Um, she's been really wonderful. Um, and Denise Norse, who is my VI. Um, it's a real honor to have this award. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So next will be Sandy Mong. Congratulations, Sandy. One point, Sandy. He started out, um, but I think her connection must have dropped out. Yep, that's okay. Then coming uh, to Andrew Swinfield with some of the pictures, saw very stunning portrait captures. So congratulations, Andrew. Oh, thanks very much, Romain. And, and I'd also uh, like to thank you um, for giving us some time today on your birthday. Uh, it's much appreciated. And um, also to Bronwyn and the MC for uh, hosting this event. And I'd also like to pay special thanks to my verifying officer, Anne Smolagange. I hope that's how I pronounce your name, but um, your efforts are much appreciated. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Andre, for, for these nice words. Thank you. And among those who were unable to attend today, we have who also got their EFIAP is Wendy Deng, John Jiang, and Ian Patterson. On to the next level. The EFIAP levels on a photographic artist who after having received the EFIAP distinction, continue to actively participate in international salons under fiat patronage. And by doing so, help to promote photography with their new artistic production. FIAP has instituted seven additional EFIAP levels. Let's, we'll be doing the bronze to platinum group as a group. I'll show you their work.
since being awarded their EFIP, as I've said, these these levels go beyond. So we we have for the bronze level. 200 acceptances and 50 images in five countries that are required for this level. And they must also present four images that have received awards. Unfortunately, none of our EFIAP bronze recipients could be here today. The three recipients are Gregory Chan, Keith Sadell, Mark and Mark Stevens. So moving on to the EFIAP silver level, for which 300 acceptances with 100 works in 10 countries are, is required and they must also have a further five images with awards in different countries. Romain, would you like to announce our silver recipient? Now working? Yes. yes gotcha. uh, so I'm very happy to attribute the EFIAP silver distinction to Daniel Demi uh, Guerra. Congratulations, Daniel. Thank you, um, Romain. Um, yep, I, you can sort of see this. I'm very honoured to receive this. I, I started this journey uh, 10 years ago with my AFI app, and uh, I intend to continue entering and moving towards my next honour. So, yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, great, Daniel. 10 years, that's a, uh, yeah, you, you move forward and, you know, sometimes you say, okay, I stop here and, and then, you know, seeing the salons, seeing the pictures you do, you participate again and then it's like a virus. You go on and go on. I, I know it. I know it. Thank yeah. you, Daniel. So the we are... FI a gold level, 500 acceptances with 150 works in 15 countries is required. And these people must have a further six images with awards in different countries. Remain for the gold award, please. Yes. For the gold. Let me back up. I got lost in my notes here. So this will be the first gold. So I also wanted to point it out. I'm very uh, overwhelmed by the uh, storytelling, the variety of this storytelling and, and stunning pictures. Um, really, every domain of of travel to macro to uh, to still life uh, are presented here. So this uh, uh, um, I appreciate very much. So the first uh, if you have gold distinction will go to Wally Cannon. Congratulations, Wally. Thank you, Romain, for coming today, and also thank you, Bronwyn, and the verifying officers in particular. The many hours of work that you guys do getting all our applications ticked and correct so we can all be here today. So definitely thank you guys to you, goes to you guys. Great. Thank you, Wally. Then going on to an small gauge. Very congratulations from my side, Anne. Thank you very much, Romain. Thank you for being here today and happy birthday. Thank you Thank also you. to Bronwyn for the incredible amount of work and lovely detailed instructions she gives us. And I'd also like to give a huge shout, uh, shout out to my VO, uh, Denise North. And she's been doing mine for, I think, nearly every single one, which has been absolutely marvellous. Um, yep, here Thank it you. is. EFIP gold. Wonderful. Great. Great achievement. So next will be Jan Sharples. Congratulations, Jan, for your EFIAP Gold distinction. Unless I'm missing something, Jan's not with us today. Uh, it looked certain she wasn't. She hadn't arrived at the start of the meeting. I think we unfortunately haven't got Jan with us. Okay, we pick the next one. The next one will be Michelle Stokey. Congratulations, Michelle. Thank you, Roman. I, I would like to thank uh, Bronwyn, but I'd also like to thank my husband. Uh, this is 10 years of me failing paperwork 110%, but I must admit I would never have done it without him. So thank you, Michael. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And we have, other than Jan, we have one other um, EFIP gold recipient who couldn't be with us. Uh, Sink Kai Chung is currently traveling in China and unfortunately Zoom is banned in China so he's not able to join in. 
And for the EFI Key Platinum, 700 acceptances with 250 works in 20 countries is required. This must include a further seven images with awards in different countries. Romain. Yeah, so the EFIAP Platinum going to Kerry Boytel. Congratulations, Kerry, for this big, great achievement. I can't find Kerry. She may have not managed to join. She she was there, but she was joined. She joined us. She's on the road. She's joining us from a vehicle. By a she was the lady in the car. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm not I'm not picking her up on the list even as a as an unknown entity. Okay, that sounds like she's lost her connection to the yeah. internet. She was worried that that might occur. Yeah. Yep. So the next one is going to Bronwen, Bronwen Casey. Congratulations. I'm very happy with all the work you have with FIAP, with checking the distinctions, with all of this, that you have time for your photography and to participate in salons. And now to get this big achievement, the EFIAP Platinum. My warmest congratulations, Bronwen. Thank you, Romain. There's the certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I've been enjoying the journey. All, all um, personal goal setting, just just for the fun of doing something with my photos. Thank you. Great. Well, I better pause a moment longer, Bronwyn, because this is special for you because you do so much hard work. So yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you can hold up your certificate again. Sure. Uh, I think we're looking for the next person, are we? <laughs> no, come back to Bronwyn for a tick. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, there we go. Fantastic. Good. So we coming to the next EFIA Platinum distinction, and that will be allocated to Paul Thompson. Congratulations, Paul. Thank you, uh, Romain, for taking time out on your birthday. And, of course, a special thank you to my verifying officer, Denise, Denise North, and, of course, Bronwyn. So, um, Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. It's a pleasure for me to be here today. Thank you. Oh, here we go. I did come prepared. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Now going on to the diamond levels. The three EFIAP diamond levels have only been offered since 2016 and are for achievements gained since the EFIAP platinum level was awarded. Only awards are counted. There were no Diamond Level 2 applicants this year. However, we did have a Diamond 1 and a Diamond 3 recipient. Let's see the images submitted by our two Diamond recipients. <laughs> For the EFIAP Diamond 1 level, 50 awards with 15 images achieved in five countries is required. Unfortunately, John Chapman, who is our EFIAP Diamond 1 recipient, could not be with us today. I believe he's walking in the US. And for those of you who know John, you'll know John writes walking guidebooks and indeed uh, goes out rescuing people who get themselves lost in the bush. <laughs> uh, but for the, we've 
have got our EFIAP Diamond Level 3 person here, who I'm thrilled with because she's come off a plane and basically run for this meeting. <laughs> uh, so the EFIAP Diamond Level 3, it is the highest FIAP distinction possible via the exhibition system. For EFIAP D3, 200 awards with 50 images achieved in 10 countries is required. Australia now has its fourth recipient of this level, Romain. <laughs> oh, we've lost you again. I will, my, my sincerest congratulations to Diamond One, already to uh, John uh, Chapman, who cannot be with us. And then, of course, for the Diamond Three, I don't know, see, I think I saw, I spotted some pictures from Cuba there. So, congratulations, Vicky Moritz, for your IFIAP Diamond 3. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to um, thank Bronwyn for her encouragement and help over the years and for persuading me to get off the plane and run to set up my computer. Uh, to yourself, Romain, thank you so much for coming along. I would love to be in France. I'd love to go back to Cuba. <laughs> Fabulous place. Um, to the other recipients, I really enjoyed seeing your work come through. Um, it is addictive. Um, I didn't think I would ever get here. Um, I swore many times I would stop, but uh, here is my certificate. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Vicky. And I think there are some more levels to come to come up in the next distinctions level. So, oh, so no, distinctions, don't uh, tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We must keep you busy. <laughs> <laughs> So congratulations to all this year's recipients of FIAP Distinctions. A full list of the FIAP Distinctions for this year is on the Honours Roll on the APS website. Now we're going to take some photos of the whole group before then moving on to a talk from Romain that I think you'll all be hanging out to hear. <laughs> uh, so if everyone can grab their certificates, if they've got them handy, and we will take a few, few screenshots Oops. Okay. Uh, Pia, can you take the screenshots, please? Okay, let me just check that that's hunky dory. We'll take us. We'll say take a second one just to be on the safe side. Everybody, give me a big smile. Three, two, one. Woo! All right. Looking good. Oh, now that's better. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for that, Pear. For some reason, my screenshot wouldn't work. It might be because it's still looking at. Um... The, at the slideshow. Okay, I'm going to be giving the floor back to Romain. Uh, as you know, Romain is the patronage director and he handles things like the salon rules. And he's going to be talking to us about the patronage service and touch on some interesting subjects, I'm sure. Romain, it's your, the floor's yours again. <laughs> Thank you, Bronwyn. I will. Uh, share my screen. Okay. So what, what I wanted to, to do now to share a little bit uh, the numbers that uh, we put together in, in FIA Patronage service. It's a lot about numbers. And then of course about uh, regulations uh, which also affect participants, which affect organizations, salon organizers, and which affects the members of FIAP, the affiliated members uh, and the non-affiliated members. Affiliated members, as you know, the structure is of FIAP is that um, national federations are affiliated into FIAP, and every 
uh, activity, photographic activity, which is run under Fiat Patronas first has to be checked by these members. So in, and then we have the non-affiliated members where um, there is no federation in these countries. We always, we try to incite people to form themselves, to group themselves so that FIAP can also have a, a more careful eye of what is going on on a photographic level in these countries. Um, so first I want to share some numbers, then I want to talk about what will uh, change in FIAP patronage regulations in the next year, so in 2024. I do not want to go into detail. Um, some of uh, the changes will affect you as a participant more than others. So there are slight changes which are important to, to enumerate and which are important to explain to you. So about the numbers, you see that um, the numbers went up. This is, I have here a little a graph from 2012 on, so the numbers increased. That's not because I took over the FIA patronage uh, service in 2012, but it's just about the interest into photography and in the, let's say, the software organizing salons, it's now becoming a very, uh, logistic uh, challenge and uh, you know I, we saw in the last year software coming from the ground and making the organization of a salon much easier so we went from 2012 from two, 248 salons to 670 and I think for 2023 we will be probably around the same number so as you know, we have single events. So these 670 patronage numbers that have been given are devised in single salons and they are devised in uh, circuits. So I also made a diagram with the numbers of these salons organized over the years. And you see that in the beginning, the, the red bar are, number, are the number of single salons. You see that there is an, yeah, a tendency to, to have circuits, which gives the participant the possibility to uh, participate at the same time with his images to several salons, to three, four, or, or five salons. And um, you see that the tendency of organizing circuits has uh, past, in fact, the single salons. But for me, it's interesting that still there is a rise also of single salons from 2020 uh, to 2022 of uh, 50 units. So 2022, we had 595 salons organized in these affiliated countries. So FIAP is giving patronage only when the national federation of these countries are giving the green light for these events. We have 75 salons that were organized in non-affiliated countries where FIAP has to take a closer eye in what is organized. Often the organizers come from other countries and somehow do a and, uh, and uh, how to say, um, they make a collaboration with local photo clubs. Of course, as soon as we see that there is a greater number of these salons organized in the country, we, um, we would like to have them be affiliated in an organization that is uh, regrouping these different salon organizers. We had that recently done for Montenegro, with this, which was the second highest um, organizer in, in, for FIAP in the world. The first one was India. And there were around eight to nine organizers and who put themselves together. And now they have a federal in, in a federation which is taking a careful eye on what is going on there. We had the same thing for Guatemala, for Georgia, and for the United States of America. Okay, everybody, so as soon as COVID stepped in a few years ago in 2020, 
uh, <clears throat> FIAP decided to lift the ban on online judging. So um, online judging is judging uh, from your home uh, the pictures and not in a in in presence uh, together. So um, this was done under certain conditions. So we wanted then to have different countries involved. So if you do online um, judging, you should involve different countries in your judging team. So you know, everybody is knowing that FIAP and PSA have, I think, the most, the big numbers of uh, patronage uh, in uh, the activity of salon organizers. So um, we uh, had a lot of discussions and meetings together to make it easier for participants uh, to participate and to have common rules. So this was, we were very successful on uh, a lot of points because not, of course, not all the points, but I think what will come now and what is written in green, uh, I think we, we came to have an, a solution on it and to have common rules. So this is to adapt the required digital image sizes. So myself, I know the problem that you have to, <laughs> to change your, your, your pictures to different uh, resolutions uh, in participating in different salons. So we adapt a required digital image size, which will be the same for PSA and for FIAP. Then adapt the existing text that participants must agree before participate in a salon under FIA patronage. I think this is something um, specific for FIAP. So it's a little a tick you have to do before participating um, to really um, put things clear concerning legal methods that can arise so that you read the salon regulations, that you uh, are okay with playing according to the rules. Then something which affects you as a participant less, that's the maximum number of how many times people can judge. Uh, this is not, this was not a big issue, but we saw that certain countries always rely on the same uh, judges, competent judges, okay, but we want to have more var variety in that. And uh, that's why we will also have a closer look on that point. And then of course, the creation of a judges registry will be made so organizers can choose from a registry of, of judges where judges can identify them as uh, more um, more professional in certain branches, nature judges, uh, travel, street life judges. And um, we actually working on that. Um, we are re 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 renegotiating our, our contracts with our IT firm. And as soon as these things will be done, uh, these judges registry will also be accessible. One important thing for you, the maximum acceptance rate will rise to 30%. It rises from 25 to 30%. Um, so it's giving you more uh, chances to have your pictures in the acceptance rate. Then we will have a common definition for photojournalism and for monochrome. We already have uh, the common definition for nature. Uh, we are working currently on common guidelines. So yeah, guidelines will explain the regulations. Of course, it's a, a very tricky part. We do not want to, uh, you know, to too much show what people should do. Um, that's why important that guidelines will be um, you know, will not be biased, will be quite uh, transparent and uh, clear. Unfortunately, there was no consensus could be found on regarding the travel uh, section. The travel section under PSA uh, regulations is very uh, strict. Um, it uh, must be very authentic. And so it excludes a lot of pictures that people take from their uh, traveling. And this was not in the same line that we see uh, this section. So there will be another section from FIAP um, about travel. Yeah, then we have a, a lot of discussions about the maximum number of awards per section and per salon. This is the trickiest part because you have, of course, the awards that are um, that come from FIAP. So just to explain FIAP, 
just wants you to take at least a gold medal for each section. With a gold medal, you get two honorable mentions. Um, I think it's probably a little bit the same for PSA, but then, of course, you have other organizations. You have sometimes governments who are supporting contests and, of course, want to have their um, their awards in. So, you know, you know, it's very difficult because if you, as a salon organizer, you engage yourself into um, organizing uh, a salon, you never know how many participants you will have, how many pictures you will have to judge, how many pi pictures you will have to attribute an award. So that is making this uh, this part tricky. But on the other side, you need to buy them from, from the organizer or for the one you get patronage of. So this is a tricky part we are still working on. Then <clears throat> the other point, one award per participant per section. In order to give more people the possibility to have an, an award. Another important thing is similar images of the same order not accepted in different section of salons. Of course, this will be a, a tricky task, a big task for the salon organizers to go through the images and knowing that nowadays people participate the last two or three days into a contest, this will be quite an achievement for the organizer, at least to check if they are not identical images in different sections and also to look for similar images. Um, we are aware of the fact that this is, a, yeah, it's, it's a, a bigger task coming to the solo organizer, but, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just to be fair to all the participants. So this is, uh, I, I overflew some of, of the changes, the main changes that will affect you. And, uh, you know, if you have any, any questions, uh, you are free to, to ask them now to me. Um, I have a couple of questions. That's Vicky here. Um, the first one is about the judges registry. Um, I think Bronwyn and I had a little chat about that when we were both judging recently. Um, my understanding is that uh, the languages that the judges speak will be listed and you're saying that the areas of any particular interest will be listed and I guess as a judge myself I'm curious whether this list will be published somewhere and we actually know whether or not our names are on it. Um, can you mm -hmm. clarify some of those questions? Yes, of course. So the thing is that we have already <clears throat> the names of all the judges that um, judged a contest from 2012 on. The patronage regulations also clearly um, say that we need the email address of the judge to stay in contact with them. Of course, we have also to be conformed to to current uh, RGPD uh, rules. So this will be one legal uh, thing to, to organize. And from the other side, of course, from the moment the judge agrees to be in this registry that we have his, um, his approval to do so, mm. he will have a little prof a profile that he can complete where he is telling what, what he's judging, what is his is, um, field of, of uh, preference for judging, of course, his, his references. And um, so this will, at that point, be visible to the organizer who will look to choose judges, especially for the online judging. It's important, you know, you perhaps you want to have a guy from, from Australia, you want to have somebody from Europe in, and you want to have a good nature photographer. So it's clear that you, you must be identifiable. Uh, so you must be able to identify him. And uh, that is the plan. Okay, thank you. And I just had a second question. Um, I know as a judge, sometimes when I go through, I would see similar images in some um, uh, section, in divisions. And so uh, are we as judges also um, being asked to flag those? Like we might see one in mono and then we'll see one in nature that might look like the next frame of that particular series. Is this the sort of thing you're looking for? Yeah, so actually... You know that nowadays a lot of people participate in um, yeah, kind of workshop or just they let's not say I think workshop it's not it's always a pejorative meaning but just they participate together to a photographic event mm -hmm. and and sometimes when you see um, identical or similar images you, you might think that they are identical but there might be another 
participants' picture. Yeah. Uh, that's why it is very important that the organizer, he has an insight into it. He, he can see if there are different participants and he can guide uh, the judges to the fact that these are uh, eventually similar images. He can, he should do this together with the judges afterwards, having a look at all the pictures and saying, okay, we have uh, we have three, five, six guys who just, you know, they did not play according to the rules. We have the same or identical pictures in different sections. Please, I just show them to you and you approve, and then we can um, mm -hmm. get rid of, of some of the pictures. Or perhaps he can, uh, when he's spotting uh, these uh, things before uh, the closing date, he can inform uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the participant and say, okay, uh, look, you have put the same pictures in there or so they can, they have the ability to change. Mm, they could be tricky. The definition of similar might be an issue that um, comes up. But, yes, uh, of course. Good idea. Be what is now similar, you know? Yeah. What's, what is it? Uh, identical, it's clear, but sometimes you think it's identical. It's just an, mm. uh, a, a picture of another workshop user so he she has he has the right uh, to to send it in now similar of course it's important to have a guideline to explain what is similar but we you know we we are talking really about people sending in you know you know about this perhaps this is an example the water drop pictures so four water drop pictures you know it's quite clear that this is this is similar or you have a range of of uh, pictures that were taken just one after the other. Um, yeah, you are right. It will be a tricky part, but I think it's always the de the decision of the judges that will prevail, and that we will respect. Thank you. Are you able to shed any light on the sticking points in relation to the PSA FIA photo travel section? What areas is it that? Um, you're unable to come to agreement about. Yeah, it's about el eliminating um, a lot of pictures that are uh, made in, in um, I think the word in, in PSA is staged pictures. So um, let's say you come to a place and there is a ceremony, a traditional ceremony uh, where you make really stunning pictures. The The, the fact of we, we making this revival of the traditions is important. You have a good picture, but it is, of course, it is staged because you cannot go back in time to make the pictures there. So in FIAP, we think that it's a pity that all, all of these pictures are then put apart. And, and I said, okay, you can participate with these pictures in open section, but they have nothing to do in travel. Um, that's the, the tricky point. In nature, we, we found a solution. In nature, we said, okay, we have nature sections. You can hand in pictures of that were taken in zoos. Of course, wildlife photographers or really nature photographers, they will say, well, we should not send in pictures made in zoos. That's why there is the, the wildlife section. And we intended to have something like that, to have travel and authentic travel. So everybody could choose. The organizer can choose what section he wants to have. And um, it would have been a possible uh, possibility, but I, I respect uh, the, uh, the idea and the decision of, of uh, PSA not to go to, into that because they have their same, their own um, vision of, of seeing things. So I respect it, but it, unfortunately we could not come to a common point uh, with FIAP on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just a follow-up question. With the new fee-up definition for travel, will you do you foresee that staged images for photography will be allowed? Yes, of course. So it will be really our vision. As opposed as opposed to a show being, you know, being put on for any yeah. public. You know, every, any travel yeah. picture will be, will be allowed. And uh workshop pictures will also be be allowed so it will right. be not it will be absolutely not in the same direction that that PSA is doing it we will mm -hmm. have another name for it and uh, yeah and thank we, you Good we we intend to have a more open vision on it thank you
Uh, with your judges list, um, I'll just fill the space because I saw Bronwyn was just talking, but she hadn't unmuted herself yet. So um, with the judges list, do you intend to invite um, the judges to be on your register? Is that is that how people get onto that register it, based on yes. what your records already are? Absolutely. And do you and then to follow up, do you will you also have a system where if there are problems that people will be able to um, report any issues? Yeah. So actually, we have already the the via complaint department, which is a yeah. part of of my my service and which is run to Francis Nicole, from which I also want to thank for his work with the FIAPS and all files. He's checking all the FIAPS and all files. So there are often not inconsistencies, but they have just things who have to, to correct it because the, the names of the country sometimes are put in in a different way. And then it's giving us some work to put them in our overall database. So he's doing all this job and he's contacting organizers when there are issues with the, with the pictures names. Um, so this is uh, done by him, and I thank him very much for his work on that place. Now for the judges registry, of course, it, it's giving us um, a better insight in, in uh, what is going on with the judges. I, I think that we also will uh, contact the, um, the, the, the affiliated countries, the liaison officers, before uh, making this registry public. You know, anybody can write anything in his profile, but of course, from these countries, we want to, you know, just to double check if the judges are known. In fact, this is already done because every salon is checked or should be checked by the liaison officer or the, the service in charge of the National Federation. So I think this part will be easy. And as you, you see, there is there are around 70, 80 salons organized where we have to, to put the closer I, but we have for 2023 now, we started also to uh, randomly check uh, what is going on during the, the judging session uh, online. So the online judging session that some representative from FIAP will be present, especially in these non-affiliated countries to see how the judges are working and to mm -hmm. have a better uh, view on it. But to answer your question, yes, the judges will of course be be contacted and will be asked their approval and uh, if they want to take part of of this team i know about uh, people who do not want to have their data in our database and just said okay so it's, i do not want to be present there I, I i so i so it's it's open to everyone and we need to do that for legal uh, matters of course okay of course thank you for that i was just um do you foresee digital judging continuing yes yes, yes. so we want to take a step back now um i think with this and with the judging registry it will, it will give us the opportunity to have the the right insight into it um you know before we always you know we, we didn't know what was going on when you judge online i think perhaps it's also something which is now the time to allow it's we we, we come up mm. now we have the technical possibilities to do so so it's um yeah it's nowadays i think it's it's a normal thing and we have want to stay with it and not to go back to uh, the uh, initial uh, judging of course we appreciate that judges are coming together it's uh, every organizer is open to do it if he's using online judging of course he must take care to be uh, you know to be conform and to you know, to put in judges from other countries. This, of course, is a is a must. Thank you so much for your answers to that, Romain. Much appreciated. You're welcome. Good one. Yeah. And the only only thing I was trying to say is I thought the room had gone silent, but uh, yeah, questions. So the floor was his. <laughs> How's everyone going? Does anyone else have any um, any questions that uh, they'd like to ask Romain? You've got you've got him in the hot seat here, and <laughs> he's uh, he, and sometimes it's hard to catch Romain because, as I've said, he's one of the busiest people out there. So, if you've got a question, now's a good time to ask it. 
Well, I, I for one will be looking forward to seeing a lot more um, people and culture in the travel sections, even if they are staged, because <laughs> um, it has certainly moved away from that um, during those PSA years um, of photo travel. So I think it will be just lovely to see culture back on the table. Sorry to interrupt whoever started then. Um, well, that was me. I was just uh, wondering if there are any uh, changes or uh, additions to the uh, print uh, category going forward. Um, yes, um, but we had on, on the last assembly, uh, we discussed, I cannot give a clear answer on, on that one. Um, I'm sure that prints will be back. Uh, but I do not have now the texts to to to. Um, so we we want to support, uh, of course, print salons, and it will, you know, this condition will come back now if it's in AFIAP or if it's in the in the levels afterwards. Um, that uh, you know, it's not clearly uh, defined now. So you will have more in information about this by the end of the year. I'm I'm aware of the fact that, of course, you're preparing your your applications now, uh, but unfortunately, I cannot say more about it now. It, it's also not my service, so it's uh, it's Freddy's uh, service, and um, I I know that in the last assembly we talked a lot of of it, so uh, it was an interesting point. And uh, but until now, I cannot give you an, a clear. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Thank answer. you. To some extent, as you probably all know, um, honors systems and indeed salon rules are very closely tied to one another. And when there's changes going on with salon rules, particularly in relation to the collaborative work between FAIRF and PSA, there needs to be a consideration as to how those changes will then affect distinctions rules. So the two tend to have to be worked on in tandem. And like Romain said, uh, the distinctions rules are handled by um, Freddie Van Gilbergen, who is the um, the director of the distinction service, so not, not remain, but the, the two are, are frequently in communication over these sorts of things, as indeed are the whole board. Uh, the, uh, we, Romain and I were talking a little bit about uh, things like the, um, the this travel section uh, here, and uh, particularly after some of my conversations with you. And as Romain said, there's some images now that are actually very good that are being overlooked for the safer choices because they're, um, you know, they might have been staged and as a result, the um, judges veer away from them, um, perhaps well, negating. And often they're not staged, but yeah. the judges are too scared or, or not, not um, educated enough in travel around the world um, to know that these people or these situations exist. So it's been a little bit frustrating to be judging with judges and all you see in the top of it are buildings, you know. It's and just, yeah, that, it's, that's, that's exactly not what I, I mean. call travel. That's exactly what I, I mean, Pia. So yeah. sometimes I'm also judging travel sections and uh, sometimes you see there is a big question mark coming up and then, you know, and it's, I, I simply have the impression it is against, always somehow against the, the, the picture, the, against the participant, because you never really know. And then, you know, some judge has perhaps more information about it, but that's not the point. You know, we cannot check everything. And so why? why? Okay, if we have the two options, and we can say we did this and we did this, we take nature, we take wildlife, or we take yeah. travel like authentic travel. Yeah. I think it's, it's okay if the judge knows, you know, if the judge knows that this is not correct and it cannot happen without it being staged, that's one thing. But to make presumptions is another. And that's yeah. what is the problem. You can even have that in nature too. Um, yeah. With, you know, particularly the, um, uh, the one I keep coming up Came across twice literally in the last two salons I've judged where people are where judges are reluctant to give an award to an image of a, a seagull or or indeed any other bird of prey swooping down to pick up a fish from the water because there's workshops out there 
that mm -hmm. put the fish in the water. They put frozen fish in the water. They wait. They they're all lined up with their tripods. They wait <laughs> for the bird to swoop down and pick up the fish. That's right. They do. <laughs> when you get that photo in a um in a competition, do you award that photo or don't you? Because well, if you know that eagle, <laughs> that's right. Or even have a personal you know the photographer that sometimes, eagle. but uh, but yeah, it, it's a problem. You don't know. You cannot be sure. And hence, people will say, "Oh no, no, most of those are staged. You know, that's not a, yeah. a real, a real nature photo." You know, so, yeah, or wildlife that would be. Um, so it's also perhaps a good a good occasion to mention that we have the FIAP Ethics Service. You, you know, Bronson, who is run by Pierluigi uh, Rizzato, who, who is an eager wildlife photographer. And who we are very happy to to work with, and who will, if you have doubts in pictures that got an award, uh, as an organizer, you you should send them to him, and he will make a very close analysis of of the pictures. So um, if it's if something was done in Photoshop, he can for sure um, uh, say something, and he has also the knowledge about these these workshops. But there again, we are in. In the assumptions thing, so he's more specialized of checking images that have been uh, modified in a not legal way. So you know, it's also some kind of a work. I think PSA has the same the same uh, service, and um, yeah, we we always um, uh, running behind. You know, running behind the people if we change a rule or we do something. So some always on another place something which is opening, and we have to have a closer look at that. It, it's not an easy task. A lot of work. Anyone else have any? Well, they're a quiet lot, aren't they? They are. We've sort of the top row on my screen of um, being dominated in this conversation. Yeah, you've got a few words. Can I say a word? Oh, and, and of course, Vicky. <laughs> okay. I've been involved in running um, the photographic circuit here in Queensland for 10 years now. I think it, our last one was the, the last one we are going to run. Just a couple of observations. Um, one of our last topics involved like landscape and fog and things like that. Um, and we found with the current PSA rules, things have to be all color or all monochrome if we also have like the PSA approval as well. And we actually would have liked to have the category with both color and monochrome images in it. And we're thinking, okay, well, we will get PSA approval because we always have, and some people do look for it. And I find this to be a bit of a, um, I don't know, it, it's it's too much compartmentalisation probably coming from PSA. I think, okay, it's a bit of a criticism, but that's the way that their system works. And I understand that they've had changes as well. But from, some, from someone who's you know trying to run an event to have all images in colour or all images in mono for you know what they call projected images is a little bit of a problem. Um, I don't know whether anything can ever be done about that. That's that's a PSA system. Um, and the other thing we've always had problems with too is with the PSA rules, you can have no more than two weeks be between um, the end, the closing of taking images in and the judging. And that's been for a long time. What we're finding, um, particularly with the sections that have definitions, to go through them very closely and see what's in there and have a good look at some of these images, it takes quite a while. And by the time you do all that and then have everything ready, ready for judging within two weeks, particularly when you have people who do work full time, and things like that, that becomes an issue as well. Now, I know FIAP doesn't have a, a time limit, but I know PSA does. Um, I don't know whether we are the only people or, you know, we said, oh, we'd love more time, thanks, to go to and check all these images. And then it's a matter of if you find a few, what do you do with them? Do you correspond with the author? Do you knock them out? Do you say nothing? There's all this sort of stuff. And I think that's... Um, that's in PSA rules as well that you've got to go through and stuff like that. And I know FIAP has their, their rules as well. But it becomes a little bit off-putting to have to go through something uh, which has 
well, a fair bit of work in a very short time, shall we say. And we, I think the last few years, um, because there's, there's only a few of us who actually run this thing, we just said, listen, we'll just keep it to more open subjects rather than going for um, every um, for things like photo travel or nature. And it, it's a shame. It really is a shame. We'd like to have them, but um, the end we said too much work. So that's just some observations from somebody who's um, all been running a circuit. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. I absolutely agree with you. And that's what we mentioned before. You know, uh, the way people work, it, it's changing. So they wait the last moment to participate. We are giving you more tasks to check. So it's clear that the, the time limit, so FIAP doesn't have any time limits, never had and, and, and will in that, uh, that respect not have. Um, now, what I can bring up in our discussions with pieces A, just to mention what you said and to to try to yeah to ease this time limit. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I think with people, you know, you, you're supporting staff having work working full time. I mean, you've got you know, everything goes to an IT system now. It's not just like you know, I just get hold of the slides and put them through like you did 15, 20 years ago. And the possibility of cheating was rather minimal. These days, you need to have a good look at each image. And when you've got thousands of images, it takes a long time. And then you need to talk to somebody else. What do you reckon? Should this be in or out? We haven't got the time to do all that in under two weeks. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, it's a PSA stipulation. As, I, as you said, FIAP don't have a time limit and never had. But um, when most of us do go for FIAP approval and also PSA approval, it becomes an issue. So and yeah. I, I do mention too, like I was involved with Queensland Circuit, we have run our last one, we won't be holding anymore. Um, we've had 10 years, I thought, well, that's enough. But just, just as an observation, I'd just like to pass it along. Good, thank you, Anne. I will bring it to discussion and uh, uh, from my side, I, I absolutely comprehend. Thank you. Thank you. And you say hello, it's, it's uh, John North and... Uh, John and Denise North, yes, and Ken Dixon. You say, yeah, you say hello to to them and and give them. Oh, I had the opportunity to to have them in in Luxembourg once and uh, to guide them a little bit around. So say hello to them. I will. I will. Denise was actually invited here today as one of our verifying officer team, but I haven't heard from her. Perhaps it's in Caloundra. Like They're up at Caloundra at the moment. They're not at home. There you go. That's why she's not here. Otherwise, she would have actually been in the room. Yeah. yeah. We're joining the birthday party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, <laughs> I think it's a very typical birthday party. I think if I remember correctly, the Congress in 2018 in South Africa, there were, which was held in August also, yeah. I, I seem to recall a birthday cake there too. <laughs> your, your birthdays tend to... Ah, oh, they say. Hmm. Wonder how many birthdays he has per year. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> we all know the date now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep you to that. <laughs> uh, so how are we going? It's. Uh, I think um, it looks like we've exhausted the questions. No one else has anything else they wish to ask whilst you've got Remain here with us. No. No. Uh, everybody up for another medal next year? Everybody up for another award? Hopefully. Yeah. Good on you. Oh, Michelle's shaking her head. No. Yeah, Michelle, <laughs> I always say. That's what she says okay. now. We'll see. I know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, look, it's it's been a wonderful to have you here, Romaine. I'm so glad. So glad I was able to get a hold of you eventually and uh, to be able to, that you were able to join us here on what is indeed your your personal time with your family um, and indeed on your birthday, which uh, I guess if there wasn't some photography element to your birthday, it wouldn't be normal, would it? <laughs> no. Not you anyhow. But let's say it was, it was now, it, it, it's no, you know, it was not such a, such a big problem. It's early in the morning, so I have the whole day uh, for us celebrating now. And and I think this is a very important event 
um, to, to be part of. Um, you know, we always cherish these moments where the distinct getting your distinctions is, is is very important you know it's i think everybody has a very keen eye on on that and i know for myself you have this little pin you are very happy when you when you have it so i have it not now here with me but uh, i comprehend and for also the federation is a very you know um, important thing and, and that's where I, I immediately agreed to be to be part of it thank you and thank you everyone else for coming and sorry we had a bit of a delay at the start we always try to make sure we've got everyone who's endeavored to be here and there was clearly a few people that had trouble joining us which is a bit sad but uh, we we got a good group here and uh, we've had an interesting discussion at the end on top of what's been a, a nice presentation for all of you so thank you once again everybody and Romain I hope the rest of your day is absolutely sensational <laughs> and um, I think with with that, given that uh, we've exhausted our questions, we can probably wind up this event for 2023 to say we will be here again in 2024, uh, hopefully with some of the same faces and a number of new ones. But uh, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank thanks, Bronwyn. Thanks, thanks, Ryan. Thank, thank you, all. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Close the door, everybody. Congratulations.